Hey there, you are welcome on board as we solve and revise mathematics 2019 paper for grade 7. So follow closely and let's revise mathematics together. Question number 1, 2019 grade 7 paper said the perimeter of the trapezium below is the perimeter of the trapezium below is so when we look at um, our question number one which we are solving there we are able to see the trapezium being given to us and they want us to find the perimeter and we know that by definition perimeter is the distance around the given shape and so we're able to see that this distance is three centimeters that distance is five centimeters four centimeters and seven centimeters for you and I to be able to find the perimeter of that given shape, we are going to add all the distances around this trapezium. So let's begin. So we know uh, we have been given, we can say P perimeter is equal to 3 centimeters, which is that, plus 5 centimeters, plus 4 centimeters, plus seven centimeters all right so let's be able to add that together now so three centimeters plus five centimeters plus four centimeters plus seven centimeters and we get our answer being 19 centimeters so we indicate here and say the answer is 19 centimeters so if 19 centimeters is our answer, we now look at our multiple choice and we look for where 19 centimeter was and we see that it was represented as option C. We quickly go to our second question. Our second question says, add 33,000, add 33,391 to 47,000 419. So for us to be able to find that answer, we are going to be able to put that in that format 33391 and we say 474419 in that way. And then we are saying we are adding and we do that. So we begin our addition 9 plus 1, that's a 10, so 0 carry 1. 1 plus 9 is 10, plus the remainder 1 is 11, so 1, carry another 1. 3 plus 4 is 7, plus the remainder 1, we get 8. 3 plus 7 is 8, is 10, so we write 0, and we carry 1. 3 plus 4 is 7, plus the remainder 1 is 8. And so that becomes... Our answer, so 80,810 is our answer, and we see it represented on option A. We go to our third question. The third question says, the next two numbers in the sequence, the next two numbers in the sequence, 5, 7, 9, 11, dash, uh, so they want us to find the next two numbers in this sequence which we have been given uh, below. So what we do there is uh, let's study the pattern of the sequence. For you to be able to find the next numbers in any given sequence, the first thing that you do is that you must be able to know the pattern which was being used for them to get the next number. So when we look at this number, we know that... Um, well, they start with 5, 5 to 7, 7 to 9, then to 11. So we're able to see that, okay, they are doing a plus 2. 5 plus 2, 7. 7 plus 2, 9. 9 plus 2, 11. 11 plus 2, we need to get 13. 13 plus 2 should give us 15. And uh, our pairs of uh, numbers which we are looking for is 13 and 15. And we see that being shown on answer option D rather there. All right. Question number four says, look at 
the set below look at the set below so we have our set here which is under consideration and the question says list a union b list a union b so for us to be able to list set a union b first and foremost what we need to know is when they say union what do they really mean so when they say you can you list set a union b union will mean can you list or write down all the elements under consideration combining the elements in a and also combining the elements in b so if we have a union b in that particular way so what we're going to do is we're going to write all the elements that we have in set a and then we we'll also list we we'll include all the elements listed in b so looking at this set the way it has been given the the area which represents a union b is this area which i am just shading in that particular way so a union b is represented in that area which i have shaded and therefore let's begin to list it so we know that a union b should be equal to let's list we have uh, p comma q comma r comma s comma u so p we have p there q we have q there r we have r there s we have S there, U, we have U there. So that is the set representing A union B. So we we'll leave out W, V, and T because these are elements which are found outside the union set A and B, the union of A and B. Having found that, we come to our multiple choice, we look for P, Q, R, S, U and it's on option C and that is our answer. We go to question number five. Question number five says express eight times eight times eight times eight times eight in index form. Express eight times eight times eight times eight times eight in index form. So for you to be able to express eight times eight times eight times eight times eight in index form, you say eight, then you count how many times was eight repeated? One, two, three, four, five. And so we say to the power five, and that's eight represented in index form, and we see that being reflected on A. Therefore, our answer for number five was A. We go to question six. Question six there is requesting us for to, to be able to subtract. So quickly, just go ahead and subtract. They have already arranged everything for us. So we start um, one, take away two. It can't, so we're going to borrow one from six and six remains the five. The one becomes 11. 11 take away two, that's nine. Five take away nine, it can't. So borrow from seven, the seven remains a six, and the five becomes a 15. 15 take away nine, that gives us a six. And we have um, six take away eight, it can't. You borrow from the four, the four becomes a three, the six becomes a 16. So 16 take away eight is eight. 3 take away 1, that's 2. 6 take away 7, it can so borrow from 9. 9 becomes 8, the 6 becomes 16. And 16 take away 7, we get the answer being 9. Then 8 take away 3, we get our answer being 5. So we can say that our answer there is 592,869. So we're looking at 592,869.
869 and we see that on option D. All right, uh, we are getting there. Question number seven. Question number seven is requiring us to be able to subtract. It's saying subtract 3.3.257 minus 0 0.075. So we need to subtract that. So for us to be able to subtract, we're going to rearrange in this order. 3.257 minus 0. Point. Make sure that the point is in the same line. 0, 7, 5, and we do that. 7, take away 5. We have a 2. 5, take away 7. It can't so borrow from 2. It remains a 1. The 5 becomes a 15. 15, take away 7. We get our 8. 1, take away 0. It's 1. Then we have the point there aligning with the other points. Then 3, take away 0. We have 3. And that is our answer. And we see that answer being shown on option C. So number seven, the answer was C. We go to number eight. Number eight, the question says, change 60% to a decimal. Change 60% to a decimal number. So we have been given uh, 60%. We know percentage is always out of 100%. So we can cancel the percent there. We can, uh, that zero and that zero can cancel each other. And then you can say 10 into 6, it goes there zero times. Um, we add a zero to 6. The moment you add a zero to 6, you put a point there. 10 into 60, it goes there six times. So 60% uh, as a decimal is 0 0.6. 0 0.6. And um, that was represented on option B. That was represented as option B. Quickly, let's look at number nine. Question number nine says, the line of symmetry in the diagram below are, the lines of symmetry in the diagram below are, right, as we've always said in our previous videos when we've been revising grade seven mathematics papers, we first uh, start by defining probably what symmetry might mean if they say lines of symmetry, what do they really mean? So the lines of symmetry are lines which are able to cut a given shape into two parts which are going to be equal. And this sh shape that we've been given even in on question nine, which we're looking at right now in 2019, it has two lines of symmetry. So there are two pairs of letters which are representing the, those two lines of symmetry which we have. And so if we look at this shape, we can tell that, okay, if you cut this line, HD, you know it's, 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 it's a line cutting there. So if this shape is folded from the center, it will have two parts which are matching and fitting perfectly. So uh, DH is the first line. So DH will be uh, one line we are going to look at. And when we, we will look for another line also, which when we fold is going to give us two equal parts which are fitting when put against each other well, well. And uh, which line is it? Is it? AE or is it line CG or is it line BF? So if we say AE, they won't, it won't really be fitting, it will be mismatched. If we say CG, it will still be mismatched. But if we get BF, the line BF, you find that that is another line of symmetry which is going to give us two equal parts which will be able to fit perfectly well when put against each other. And so the two lines of symmetry that we've been looking for in this question is line DH and also line BF. And we see uh, our C there tells us uh, the two lines of symmetry is BF and CG. No, um, B says AE and DH. 
maybe that's correct, but not this. Even on C, this one was correct, but not that. On A, A, E is not correct, but B, F is correct. So the only answer with those two lines we're looking for is D, which has B, F, and D, H, and therefore answer for question 9 was D. Question number 10, it reads, express the ratio 25 centimeters to 5 centimeters in its lowest terms. Express the ratio 25 centimeters to 5 centimeters in its lowest terms. So that ratio is expressed in this way. We're going to say 25 centimeters to 5 centimeter. We can even just say 25 to 5. And uh, when we look at both the numbers that we are considering, we see that 5 is common in both. So we can say 5 into 5, you get your 1. 5 into 25, it gives you a 5. So we're looking at it coming down to 5 to 1. 5 to 1. And 5 to 1, we see that as the answer being shown on point A. We go to question 11, which says, A man bought two pieces of material measuring 1.75 meters and 1.5 five meters how many meters of material did he buy all together so this man buys two pieces of material with one material measuring 1.5 meters and the other material measuring 1.5 meters so the question there is how many meters of material did he buy all together so we add the two which we are given. We have 1.75 meters and we have 1.5 meters. You can put a placeholder there and let's add 5 plus 0 is 5, 7 plus 5 is 12. So 2 carry a 1, 1 plus 1, 2 plus the remainder plus the, the, the one which we carried, it becomes three. So we're looking at the piece of material of uh, the, the total piece of material after adding the two pieces which uh, this man had bought, it brings us to 3.25 meters. And we see 3.25 meters being represented as option B. We go to, our, we go to, our, to question 12. We go to question 12. Question 12 says, 10 pockets of salt cost 200 kwacha. 10 pockets of salt cost 200 kwacha. How much will 8 pockets of salt of the same type cost? How much will 8 pockets of salt of the same type cost? To get our solution to this answer or to this question, to get our solution to this question, we use direct proportion. We we'll say 10 pockets of, of salt is equal to 200 kwacha. How about if we look at 8 pockets of salt? 8 pockets of salt. So what if we say 8? It should be able to give us, we don't know, that's what we are looking for. So we represent the part which we don't know by x. So let's cross multiply. When we cross multiply 10 times x gives us 10x being equal to 8 times 200 gives us 1600. So we can say over 10, over 10, cancel that. And um, uh, 0 and 0 cancel. So we get something like x is equal to uh, 160 over 1, 160 over 1. And our x should be equal to 1 into 160, which is still 160. So we can say 8, eight sorts, 8 packets of sort, 8 packets of sort are equal to 160 kwacha, which we see on C. On C. We go to question 13. Question 13 says, given that set A is equal to 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, and set B is equal to 1, 5, 7, and 8, list A intersection B. So when we talk about intersection, we are talking about a set which contains elements which are appearing in both the two given sets. So for us to be able to find A intersection B, we're going to get all the elements which are found in set A and all the elements that, pardon me, all, we are going to get the elements that are found both in set A and in set B. So 2 is only in set A, we leave it out. 3 is only in set A, we leave it out. 4 is only in set A, we leave it out. But 5, on this, on this case, 5 there, we have also 5 in B. We have... Uh, 7 in set A, we also have 7 in set B. So we know that what is common in both A and B is 5 and 7. And that becomes our intersection set. And 5,7, we see it as option D. So our answer for question 13 is, is D. Question 14. Question 14, it's a multiplication which we have been given there. We should be able to multiply. So let me just write uh, what we've been given again here for to create more space. And 36, multiply. So we're going to multiply these numbers at the bottom with everything on top. So we start with 6. 6 times 7. 6 times 7. It gives us 42. So we write a 2, carry a 4. 6 times 9. 6 times 9 gives us 54. Plus the 4 which remains there, it becomes 58. So we write 8 and we carry a 5. 6 times 2 is 12. 12 plus the remainder 5, that's 17. So we write a 17. So we come to this other number now. Again, we do the same to multiply with everything on top. 3 times 7 is 21. So we write 1, carry a 2. 3 times 9 is 27. 3 times 9 is 27. 27 plus 2, which remained, is 29. So you write a 9, carry a 2. And then 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus the remainder 2 gives us 8, so we put 8 there, put a plus sign, do that, and be able to put a placeholder there. So 2 plus 0 is 2, 1 plus 8 is 9, 7 plus 9 is 16, so write a 6, carry a 1, 1 plus 8 is 9, plus the remainder 1, that's 10, so you put the whole 10 there, and you have the answer. Your answer being able to being you have your answer being ten thousand six ninety two ten thousand six ninety two and that answer was shown as option A. We go to question fifteen. Question fifteen says in Arabic numerals the Roman numeral D C C C X X X IV can be written as can be written as so how can we write represent this Roman numeral in Arabic numeral all right so let's be able to add there we know that in Roman numeral D represents a 500 plus C is 100 another C is another hundred another C again we add 100 plus 10, 10, 10, so we have three tens, 10 plus 10 plus 10, then IV, IV represents four, and we say plus four. So we add all the numbers that we have, 500 plus 100 plus 100 plus 100 plus 10 plus 10, plus 10, plus 4, and we get our answer being 
834. And we see that being shown as option B. Number 16. Number 16 is requiring us to subtract 607 base 8 and 135 base 8. So we subtract that those two numbers which are in base 8. Alright, so we begin 7 take away 5. That's a 2. We can write a 2 in base 8 is allowed. Yes. 0 take away 1. It can't. So we borrow from 6, which means a 5, and that becomes 8 there. We've borrowed 1, 8. So 8 take away 3, that is 5. And 5 take away 1, that is 4. And we see our answer uh, being uh, in base 8 in that way. And we see 4, 5, 8, base 8 as our answer, which we're able to see on option D. We're able to see that on option D. We quickly go to number 17. Number 17. Number 17 says the highest common factor of 12, 18, and 24 is the highest common factor of 12, 18 and 24 is so what is the highest common factor so to do that we're going to list the numbers under consideration so what are the factors of 12 1 2 3 4 6 and 12 itself what are the factors of 18 1 2 3 6, 9, and 18 itself. Take the factors of 24. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24 itself. So having found those factors, now we need to know what are what are the common factors? The com oh, yes, common factors. So let's show our CF for the common factors. What are the common factors? So 1, 1, 1 is a common factor because it appears in all the three numbers. 2, 2, 2 is a common uh, factor. 3, 3, 3, so 3 is a common factor. Okay, we have 4, but 18 has no 4, so 80, we can say uh, 4 is not a common factor. 6, 6, 6, so 6 is a common factor, and there is no any other number which is common among them. Okay, so from these numbers which we have, which are factors, the common factors of those three numbers, which one is the highest factor? Which one is the highest number, which is a factor of all the three numbers we just considered? And that is 6. So 6 is our answer, and that was option C. We go to question 18, which says 413 divided by 12. Divide 413 by 12. So we can use a uh, long division there. We can say 413 divided by 12. How many times does 12 go into 41 first? It goes there three times. Three times 12, it gives us 36. We can subtract um, 1 minus 6. It can't borrow from 4. It means the 3 it becomes 11. 11 take away 6 is 5. Then we have a 0 there. 3 minus 3 is 0. So 12 into 5, it can't so drop down the 3, it becomes 53. 12 into 
53. It goes there four times. Four times 12 gives us 48. Four times 12 gives us 48. Let's subtract. Three take away eight, it cancel. Borrow one from five and five remains a four. Three becomes 13. 13 take away five. We have five as the remainder. And uh, four take away four, it's zero, zero. So we can just say remainder five. So our answer for 413 divided by 12 is 34 remainder five. And we see that answer as option B. We see that answer as option B. Question 19. Question 19 says, solve the in equation x plus five greater than, delete that. Question 19 says, solve the in equation x plus five less than or equal to 14. Solve the in equation x plus 5 less than or equal to 14. So x less than or equal to 14, 5 goes the other side becomes minus 5. So x is less than or equal to 14 minus 5, which is a 9. And that becomes our answer. x is less than or equal to 9 there, and that is D. Question 20. Question 20 says, arrange the following decimals from the smallest to the biggest. Arrange the following decimals from the smallest to the biggest. Arrange the following decimals from the smallest to the biggest. So we have uh, 2.03 1.40, 2.30, 1 1.04. The smallest decimal there is 1.04. Then the second smallest, we come to 1.40. Then we come to 2.03. And the last one is 2.3, 2.30. So that's the answer we are looking for from smallest to the largest. So 1.04, then 1.40, 2.03, That's A, and A is our answer. Question 21 says, Mrs. Wadia produced... 14,163 bags of maize. She later sold 3,871 bags of maize. How many bags of maize remained? Mrs. Walia produced 14,163 bags of maize. She later sold 3,871 bags of maize. How many bags of maize remained? There we just subtract the bags which were produced 14,163 minus the, the, the bags of maize she sold, which is 3871. So three take away one is two, six take away seven, it can't. So borrow from one, it remains a zero, the six becomes a 16. 16 take away seven, that's a nine. Zero take away eight, it can't. So borrow from 14 and the four, uh, borrow from four, the four remains a three, then the zero becomes a 10. 10 take away eight is two. Three take away three is zero. One take away nothing there remains one. So the bags of maize which remained were 10,272 and, pardon me, 10,292. And that was option D. Question 22 says, 3 is a factor of dash. 3 is a factor of dash. We know a factor is a number that can go into another number without leaving a remainder. So they are simply asking us whether 3 is a factor of which 
number which has been given. So the first one we have 28. Can 3 go into 28 without leaving a remainder? No, it can't. 3 into 28, it goes there 7 times, remainder 1. We go to B. 3 into 27, it goes there 9 times without a remainder. So our answer there is B. 3 is a factor of 27. What about C? 17. Can 3 go into 17 without leaving a remainder? No. 3 goes into 17 5 times, remainder 2. And the last one is 16. And 3 goes into 16 5 times, remainder 1. Alright, so we know 22 is settled on B as our answer. We go to question 23 which says, A meeting started at 10 hours and ended at 12.48 hours. How long did the meeting take? How long did the meeting take? This meeting starts at 10 hours and it comes to an end at 12.48 hours. So what we are saying there is it ended at 12.48 hours and it started at 10.30. So we can just subtract so that we know how long that meeting took. How long that meeting took. 8 take away 0. That's 8. 4 take away 3 is 1. Remember to put your hours there. 2 take away 0 is 2. Then you have 0. So we're talking about 2 hours 18 minutes. And 2 hours 18 minutes we see it under option A. So A is our answer for question 23. We go right ahead to question 24. And question 24 says, The mapping shows shown in the diagram below is a dash. The mapping shown in the diagram below is a dash. So we can look at the mapping which we have there. The mapping which we have there. What is it? What kind of a mapping is it? That's what they are asking us to be able to find. So just by looking at how this mapping is, we notice that all the items on in the first circle is mapped to one there, to one item in the second circle. And so this kind of mapping is the kind that we call the many to one kind of mapping, many to one mapping. So it is many to one mapping, many to one, which is option C. We go to question 25 and question 25 says, convert 58 to base five, convert 58 to base five. So if we have the number 58 and we are to convert it to base five, uh, we are going to use this method. Uh, we do that. So there we write our remainder. There we write uh, 58. And there we write the base we want it to go into. 5 into 58, it goes there 11 times. Remainder 3. 5 into 11, it goes there 2 times, remainder 1. 5 into 2, it goes there 0 times, remainder 2. To get our answer in base 5, we are going to pick up the number starting from the bottom going upwards. So we start with 2, 1, 3, 5. So that's our base 5. That's our base 5. 2, 3, 1 as base 5. And we see that as option B. We go to question 26. Question number 26 is a fraction. Like we can see, question number 26 is a fraction. And they want us to be able to find that fraction by subtraction. They want us to be able to find that fraction by subtraction. 
So let's subtract that fraction so that we are able to get the answer which we are looking for. So we know for us to be able to subtract there, we, let's write it to, again. We, we, we rewrite it. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12, over 5, minus 1 times 1, 5, plus 3 is 8, over 5. Common denominator is 5, 5 is common, 5. So 5 into 5, 1, 1 times 12 is 12, minus 5 into 5, 1, 1 times 8 is 8. That should be equal to 12 minus 8 is 4 over 5. So our answer there is 4 over 5, 4 over 5, and we see 4 over 5 being shown on option D. So that's our answer for question 26D. We quickly go to question 27. Question 27 says, a bed is bought at 1,000 kwacha and later sold at 1,500 Calculate the profit percentage. Calculate the profit percentage. So we know this bed was bought at 1,000 kwacha and it was later sold at 1,500. And they're asking us to calculate the percentage profit. So for us to get the percentage profit there, so percentage profit should be equal to the, the profit itself the profit over the cost price of the bed in the first place. So the cost of the bed was 1,000 kwacha and it was sold at 1,500. So what is the profit? So the profit is 1,500 minus 1,000, which is a 500. So our profit there is 500 kwacha. Over the cost of the bed, the cost price, which was 1,000 times 100. Zero there cancels that zero. That zero cancels that zero. So we can say 10 into 500. That should be able to give us 50. 50%. 50%. So 50% becomes our answer. So we can simply say our profit percentage for the bed which we had sold was um, 50%, which was option C. Question 28 says, calculate the simple interest on 10,000 kwacha invested for four years at the rate of 5% per annum. Calculate the simple interest on 10,000 kwacha invested for four years at the rate of 5% per annum. So we know that simple interest is equal to principal times rate times time over 100. So our principal is a 10,000 which was invested times at the rate which was 5% times the time which was four years over 100. And if we multiply 10,000 times five times four, we get our answer being 200,000. 200,000 over 100. So zero there, zero there, zero there, zero there. So we have a one going into a 2000, which will give us 2000 kwacha as the simple interest. And so the simple interest was 2000, which is shown on option A of question 28. Wonderful. We go to question 29, question 29. Question 29 says, in the equation, y plus 4 is equal to 9. What is the value of y? In the equation, y plus 4 is equal to 9. What is the value of y? Okay, so we are looking at, 
y plus 4 is equal to 9. y plus 4 is equal to 9. y is equal to 9. 4 crosses the equal sign becomes negative 4 when we group the like terms. So y is equal to 9 minus 4, which is 5, giving us the value of y being equal to 5, and we see that on option A. So 29, the answer was A. With question 30, and question 30 says, find the value of 24 plus open bracket 2 times 3, close bracket. So we're looking at 24 plus open bracket, 2 times 3. So we solve what is in the brackets first. So that will be 24 plus 2 times 3 is 6. 24 plus 6, that is 30. And 30 we see it being represented on option C. So our answer for question number 30 is C. We go to question 31, which says round off. 4.78 to one decimal place. Round off 4.78 to one decimal place. So we are looking at 4.78, a decimal number which has two decimal places. We have one and the second and two, which is the second decimal place. And therefore, if they want us to be able to round off to one decimal place, the one decimal place which is going to count, which we are going to be interested in, which we are interested in, is the 7 there. So this means 8 becomes the round off figure. And due to the fact that 8 is greater than 5, we nullify the 8 and it gives 1 to 7, which gives us 4.8. And 4.8 becomes our answer to one decimal place. And we see it being represented as option B. So 31, the answer is B. We go to question 32. Question 32 says, A five-sided polygon is called a dash. A five-sided polygon is called a dash. Any polygon which has five sides is called a pentagon. And straight away, that is answer C, that is represented on C. Any polygon which has five sides is called a pentagon. Let's quickly go to question 33. Question 33 says, the diagram below shows sets, sets A and B. The diagram below shows sets A and B. And we're able to see the diagram there. We're about to see set A, which has donkey, monkey, hyena. We're about to see set B, which has zebra, elephant. And we're about to see their intersection there, which has cat and cow. The question is, set A, intersection B, has dash members. The set A, intersection B, has dash members. So, the intersection is the middle part, which contains... The elements which are found in set B and also in set A. And so the intersection is represented by that area there. That's the intersection. And this intersection only has two members, which is cat and cow. So our answer there is two. How many members does it have? It only has two members. We go to question 34. Question 34. Question 34 says, add the fraction 1, 2 over 5 plus 2 over 3. Add the fraction 1, 2 over 5 plus the fraction 2 over 3. So we're looking at 1, 2 over 5 plus 2 over 3. 1 times, pardon me, 5 times 1 is 5 plus 2 is 7 over 5 plus 2 over 3. 
do that for the common denominator. What is the common denominator of 5 and 3? The common denominator becomes 15. 5 into 15 is 3. 3 times 7 is 21. Plus 3 into 15 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10. So they should, uh, when we add 21 plus 10, it gives us 31 over 15, which is equal to 15 into 31, it goes there 2 times 1 over 15. So 2, 1 over 15 becomes our answer. And that answer, we see it being shown on question, on option A. On option A. So 34, the answer was A. 35, the question says... <coughs> 35, the question says, Mrs. Mono bought a dress at 30 kwacha and later sold it at 42 kwacha. Find the profit. Find the profit. So we are told that this dress was costing 30 kwacha. So 30 kwacha there we see it as the cost price and we see uh, 42 kwacha being the selling price as the price at which Mrs. Mono was able to sell the dress at. So what was the profit? So we know for you to be able to find the profit, it should be selling price minus the cost price. And in this case, the selling price is 42 kwacha minus the actual price, this the cost price of the dress, which was uh, 30 kwacha. So 42 kwacha minus 30 kwacha, it is 12 kwacha. So 12 kwacha is the profit which Mrs. Mono was able to make and 12 kwacha is on option B. Therefore, our answer for 35 is B. We go to question 36. Question 36. And question 36 says, in a meeting, there were... 500 people in a meeting there were 500 people if 30 percent of the people were men find the number of men if 30 percent of people were men then find the number of men so there what we do we say 30 percent we know percentage is always over a hundred times the total number of people which was 500 so we can say that zero cancels that zero that zero cancels that zero so 30 times 5 that gives us 150 over 1 1 into 150 is still 150 so we can say this meeting at 150 men which is C 150 men all right we're almost there we'll be finishing soon let us go to question 37 question 37 question 37 says the graph below shows the number of books that different grades in a school used the graph below shows the number of books that different grades in a school received. In a school received. So we're able to see the, the graph there. It's a line graph. We're able to see that uh, this uh, horizontal, uh, pardon me, the vertical side, it, it shows us the number of books and the horizontal side shows us the grades. And we have the question saying, which grade received the least number of books? Which grade received the least number of books? This means that they want to find out which grade received the lowest number of books. In, uh, if we were to change the word list there, it would be saying we should be able to uh, mention the grade which received the lowest number of books. Okay, so if we look at uh, grade 1, it received 40 books there. If we look at grade 2, grade 2 re received 50 books. Grade 
3 received 20 books grade 4 received uh something like uh 60 books we see grade 5 received 30 books as well as grade 7 they also received 30 books so the grade which received the lowest number of books is this one there which is grade 3 they only had about 20 books and so grade 3 is our answer which is c question 38 question 38 says a car traveled a distance of 320 kilometers in four hours calculate its speed calculate its speed so for us to be able to find speed we know that speed is equal to distance over time which is equal to um what was the distance the distance was 320 kilometers so you say 320 over time which was four hours Four hours. The time was four hours. So we can say four into thirty-two is eight plus the zero, which makes it eighty kilometers per hour. And so that becomes our speed, and eighty kilometers per hour was B. So thirty-eight, the answer was B. We now go to question 39. Question 39 says the angle marked S below is called the angle marked X below is called this angle which is marked S there. It is an angle which is less than 90 degrees. It is called an acute angle. It is called an acute angle and that's D. 39 is D. We go to question 40. Question 40 says express 2 over 5 as a percentage. 2 over 5 as a percentage. So there we simply say 2 over 5 times 100 to make it a percentage. We can say over 1 there. 2 times 100, that gives us 200 over 5 times 1 is 5. 2 into 20 there, it goes there 4 times. Um, 5 into 5 is 1 time. So we can say 1 into 40 is simply 40%. So in short, we can say 5 into 200, it goes there 40 times, and that becomes our percentage. And so 40% was option B. Question 41. Question 41 says 2.94 plus... 1.4 2.94 plus 1.4 so they want us to add 2.94 plus 1.4 add the zero as a placeholder there add 4 plus 0 4 and plus 4 is 13 carry 1 Put a decimal point, 2 plus 1 is, is 3, plus 1 is 4. So we're looking at 4.34, 4 which was A. So A is our answer on question 41. Question 42. Question 42 says, study the shape below. Study the shape below so we are able to see this shape. That's what we are studying. And the question says, how many vertices does the shape have? How many vertices does the shape have? So the key is in the word vertices. If they say vertices, what do they mean? So when they say vertices, they, they're talking about the corners, the corners. Where the lines are joining from there. Those are the ones we are referring to as the vertices. So how many vertices does this shape have? So let's count them together. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
six, seven, eight. So this shape has eight vertices, which is B. We go to question 43. Question 43 says, round off 51,846 to the nearest 100. Round off 51,846 to the nearest 100. So, we're looking at 51,846. So the ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, then hundred thousand. Hundred thousand. So the nearest hundred is this one. And the main round of figure is going to be that one. So we'll start 51. Then this is round of figure. So we come to this one, is it 5 and above or it's below 5? If it's below 5, we just cancel out those figures so and we replace them with zeros. If it was above 5, it would have given a 1 to 8. But since it's below 5, the round of figures below 5, we just say 8 and the zeros. So 51,800 is our answer. And that is B, option B, 51,800. Question 44. Question 44 says, express 7 over 8 as a decimal. Express 7 over 8 as a decimal. So you're expressing the number 7 over 8 as a decimal. So there we just say 8 into 7, can't say so write a 0, add a 0, the moment you add a 0, you put a point. 8 into 70, 8 into 70, it goes there 8 times, remainder 6. 8 into 6, it, it can't so add a 0, 8 into 60, it goes there seven times. It goes there seven times. Remainder, remainder four. So we have a remainder four there. Eight into 40. It goes there five times. So our answer is 0 0.875. And if we are to prove this, if we just punch seven divided by eight on a calculator, you see that still you get your answer being 0 0.875. In that we see 0 0.875, we have it as option C. So our answer for question 44 is C. Question 45. Question 45, it reads, find the circumference of the circle below. Find the circumference of the circle below. So we're able to see that circle, take pi being 3.14, take pi being 3.14. Now, the circumference goes with the formula C is equal to, if we have the radius like this, it becomes 2 pi r, 2 pi r. Okay, and the reason why it's 2 pi r because of the 2 r times r are the two radiuses which are there so we're going to say 2 times pi which is 3.14 times the radius being 6 centimeters and so if we are to multiply that we say 2 times 3.14 times our radius which is 6 we get our answer being 37 37.14 six eight centimeters so our radius is 37.68 centimeters we go to question 46 and question 46 says if the exchange rate is 9.5 kwacha to one us dollar how much is seven dollars in kwacha how much is seven 
dollars in kwacha so we have been told that if one dollar is equal to 9.5 kwacha how much will seven dollars now seven dollars be in kwacha so we can cancel out a dollar there and let's cross multiply so we know our x should be equal to seven times 9.5 so seven times 9.5 and we see that seven dollars should be 66.5 66.5 quarter so we just use direct proportion for us to be able to get that answer there yeah so our answer is 66.5 Quacha and that is shown as option A. We even forgot to circle our answer for question 45, which was um, 37.68 was B. That was 45, the answer is B, 46, the answer is A. And we now go to question 47. Question 47. Question 47 says, which of the Roman numerals is the smallest? Which of the Roman numerals is the smallest? We have A, which is L, X, I, V. So L is 50 plus X being 10 plus I, V being 4. So the, the, the first Roman numeral there is 50 plus 10, 60 plus 4, which is 64. The second Roman numeral is L, which is 50, plus 1, 1, plus 1, plus 1, which is 52. Our third Roman numeral there is XL. XL is 40, plus 1, which is 41. And our last Roman numeral there is XL, which is uh, 40, plus 5, which is 45. And so between A, B, C, and D, which one is the smallest? The smallest is C. The smallest is C, which is the smallest is C, which is X L I. We go to question 48. Question 48 says, find the value of 3 to the power 2. Find the value of 3 to the power 2. So 3 to the power 2 is 3 times 3 which is equal to 9. So the value of 3 to the power 2 is 9, and we see 9 as the answer for D there. We go to question 49, and question 49 says, divide, divide 3 over 5 by 2 over 5. Okay, so once we do that, we say 3 over 5, the division sign turns into multiplication, the moment the division sign turns into multiplication, we swap, the denominator becomes the numerator, and the numerator becomes the denominator in that way. So we can look at our diagonals, we see that 5 and 5 are common, so 5 there 1, 5 there 1. 3 times 1 is 3 over 1 times 2 is 2. So we can say how many times does 2 go into 3? It goes there 1 time, remainder 1 over 2, so that is our answer. And that answer, we see it being shown on option A. So our answer for question 49 is A. Question 50. Question 50 is 3 plus open bracket negative 7 close brackets. So we're looking at 3 plus open bracket negative 7 close brackets. 3 negative or positive times negative there is negative 7. 3 take away 7 is um, negative 4. And negative 4 is our answer and negative 4 is B. Negative 4 came as the answer for B. We go to question 51. Question 51. Question 51 says... Find the median of 4, 3, 7, 5, 2, 1, and 6. Find the median. Find the median. So we have 4, 3, 7, 
five two one six the median which one is the middlemost so we can say one two three one two three and so our median here is going to be five that's the middlemost so our median is five in that particular way we go to question 52 and question 52 says mary bought a bicycle at 720 kwacha she was given five percent discount which was had how much was her discount? Mary bought a bicycle at 720 kwacha. She was given a discount of 5%. How much was her discount? So for us to be able to find how much her discount was, okay, that's a 5 over 100 times the 720. So 0 and 0 cancels there. Then we say 5 times 72. 5 times 72, it gives us 360. 5 times 72, it is 360 over 10. So 360 divided by 10, we see we get the answer being equal to 36 kwacha. So the 5% discount of 720 was 36 kwacha for question 52. Quickly, we rush to question 53, and question 53 says 12 men can construct a road in four months. How long will it take eight men to do the same job working at the same rate? 53 again says 12 men can construct a road in four months. How long will it take eight men to do the same job working at the same rate? So for us to be able to find that answer, we are looking at that, that's indirect proportion. So for us to find the value of the indirect proportion, we're going to say 12 men worked in four hours equals eight men to work in we don't know in box, so we can just put box. So we can replace box with X. So we can say 12 men worked in four hours. We can multiply 12, the 12 times four, and we're able to get 48 equals eight times X to give us eight X, to give us eight X. So we want the value of eight X, we'll say over eight, over eight, cancel that. So, what 8 divided by 8, what do we get? We get 6. We get 6 being equal to x. So, this x was the, the number of months which we have been looking for. And therefore, we can say that 8 men will be able to do the same job in 6 months. And so, 6 months there, we see it being represented as C under question 53. We go to question 54. Question 54, it says, order the integers below from the smallest to the biggest. Order the integers below from the smallest to the biggest. And so for starters, I would love to remind us that when it comes to integers, or rather uh, negative numbers, the bigger the negative number, the bigger it appears. The bigger the negative number may appear, the smaller it might be, in, it is in, in value rather. So the bigger the negative number might appear, the smaller it might be in value. So there, this one, uh, the 50 negative, 50 there, the highest negative number becomes the smallest. Then the second highest negative number there, 20. And then now we follow the arrangement. We have 9, positive 9. And then we have positive 30. And then we have positive 50. Positive 50. 
at the end as our arrangement. So I'm looking at negative 50, negative 20, positive 9, positive 30, positive 50, and that is B. That is B. So our answer for question 54 was B. We go to question 55, and question 55 says, question 55 says, Two, three, two, base five plus one, two, three, base five. So we are adding that in base five. So two plus, okay, let me just rewrite that. Two, three, two, base five. And one, two, three, base five. So we can add that. We can add that. Two plus five. 2, 2 plus 3 is 5, but we can try it 5. We'll say 5 divided by 5, it gives us 1, remainder 0. So we write the 0 and we carry 1 as the remainder. So this, that's what we write there, then that one is what we carry as a remainder. 3 plus 2 is 5 again, so we do the same, it gives us 1, remainder 0, plus, pardon me, 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 1 is 6. So we say 5 into 6 is 1, remainder 1. So we write our 1, remainder 1. 2 plus 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. So we say base 5. So our answer in base 5 there, we have 410 base 5. 410 base 5, and that answer is shown as option A. So our answer for question 55 is A. Question 56. Question 56. Question 56 says, what is 2 over 3 of 4? What is 2 over 3 of 4? What is 2 over 3 of 4? So we can do that over 1. So 3 into 3, 1, 3 into 12 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8 over 1 times 1 is 1, which is equal to 1 into 8 is 8. So 3 over 2 of 12 is equal to 8, which is D. We go to question number 57. We are about to finish just four more questions. Question 57 says Mrs. Wembia had two... Question 57 says, Mrs. Wembia had 552 oranges of the same size to be packed in boxes of the same size. If one box holds 24 oranges, how many boxes did she pack? If one box holds 24 oranges, how many boxes did she pack? So we are told that Mrs. Wembia had 552 oranges. Mrs. Wembia had 552 oranges and she was packing in boxes and each box packed 24 oranges. So the question is how many oranges did, how many boxes did she pack? So there we can just, uh, it's the same as 552 divided by 24 and if we divide 552 divided by 24, the answer is going to be 23, so she packed 23 boxes, and 23 boxes is option A. So our answer for question 57 was A. We go to question 58. Question 58 says, find the average of 15 degrees Celsius, 25 degrees Celsius, and 20 degrees Celsius. So we're looking at 15 degrees Celsius plus 25 degrees Celsius, plus 20 degrees Celsius over 3. So when we add 15 degrees Celsius plus 25 degrees Celsius plus 20 degrees Celsius, we get the answer being equal to 60 degrees Celsius over 3, and we see that our final, final answer is going to be 20 degrees Celsius, and that is the average. And that average 20 degrees Celsius 
was option A, and so 58, question 58, the answer is A. We're moving closer to the end. We go to our second last question, question 59. And question 59 says, find the total surface area of the cuboid below. Find the total surface area of the cuboid below. So to find the surface area of a cuboid, surface area is equal to 2 length times width plus 2 LH plus 2 WH. So that should be equal to 2 times the length 10 times the width there, 6, plus 2, open bracket, the length again, length, times the height, the height there, which is 4, plus 2, open bracket, the width there, 6, times the height, which is 4. So we know in brackets we have open 2 there, uh, 10 times 6, 60 plus 2 open bracket 10 times 4 is 40 close plus 2 open bracket 4 times 6 times 4 is 24 which will be equal to 2 times 60 is 120 plus 2 times 40 is 80 plus 2 times 24 is 48. Then we can add everything that we have there. When we add uh, 2 to 120 plus, plus uh, 80 plus 48, we get the answer being equal to 248, pardon me, 248 centimeters squared. 248 two centimeters squared, that was represented as option D. 248 centimeters squared. All right. Finally, the last question is find the lowest common multiple of 3 and 6. So to get the lowest multiple, common multiple, we say 3 there and we put 6 there. So, 3 multiples of 3 is 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, it goes on. Multiples of 6 are 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, and it goes on. So the LCM there is 12, the lowest number, which is a multiple of both 3 and 6 is 12. So the lowest common multiple is 12 and 12 was D. And we conclude our paper. That's where we end. That's the end of the paper. Uh, thank you so much for staying tuned and for following through. I hope you learned something as we are revising together and you were reminded of some of the things that you did in class. Now, as we conclude, um, remember to hit the subscribe button, share, comment, and also do make sure to come back again. We'll be solving mathematics again, revising another paper, so don't miss out.